This could probably be a bit better. That made it worse, didn't it? Let's try again. <laughs> what is going on? I know. I'm trying to figure out why. There we go. All right, insurance. So insurance is protection from financial loss. Protection from financial loss. So when we were talking about the car insurance, if you get into an accident, it can be quite expensive to fix a car. Now, insurance is not free. You have to pay for it. So you're doing that in exchange for a fee. Um, so that joke that I had up on the board from The Simpsons where Maud Flanders was talking about uh, whether or not they had house insurance after a hurricane. Do you guys watch The Simpsons? Is that like a completely absent reference sort of? All right. Well, anyway, the joke is that Marge says to Maud, oh, don't worry. I'm sure the insurance is going to pay for the damages to the house. And then Maud Flanders says, oh, no, Teddy doesn't believe in insurance. He sees it as he views it as a form of gambling, uh, which in some, like, which uh, in a lot of religions, gambling is bad. Insurance you can think of as a type of gambling, but it's a really educated uh, form of gambling. There we go. It's a really educated form of gambling. So when I make a deal with an insurance company, I'm saying to the insurance company, I think something is going to go wrong and I want to pay, and I bet money that something's gonna go wrong and you're gonna pay me out to help with that protection. The insurance company is betting that you won't have a car accident and they're just gonna collect a free kind of $600 each year because you don't have a car accident. We understand that so far. So that's the idea with the insurance. I'm betting that I'm going to do something dumb and the insurance company is betting that something dumb is not gonna happen. <laughs> Man, it is really not playing well today. That's okay, I'm gonna move on. All right. You think it's because of the lighting? Could be. All right, moving on. Okay. Cool. All right, let me grab a highlighter. Okay. So, here are the answers. These are the things you should have highlighted. Listening up. All right. So, period of insurance. That is how long I'm being covered for. So, uh, October 24th from last year to October 24th of this year. So, I have an insurance policy that is going to last me a year. Excuse me. Gentlemen, Tyrone. I'll just put up your face. Quiet. All right. Amount due. So what I had to pay last year in February, or sorry, not February, October. That is my premium. And they even compare it to last year's compre uh, premium, and it's in fact a little bit higher. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, just the cost of living is increasing. So that there's my premium. All right, on the next page over here, I can see that we have an agreed value. So the agreed value, that is what my car is worth. So that's the agreed value I made with the insurance company saying if my car gets totaled, that is how much I need, like you are gonna pay me out. I will write all of it down. All right. Last thing that we are looking at is our excess details. So if I get into an accident, I have to pay $500. Keep in mind, there are additional excesses as well if someone else is driving my car. So there's still the $500. If someone borrowed my car and they're under 25 years old, 
I have to pay the five hundred plus five fifty. So one thousand and fifty dollars if someone under twenty five borrowed my car with my permission. Uh, if I have an inexperienced driver, that's an extra four hundred. So they're over the age of twenty five, but they have less than two years of driving experience. So there's an extra fee if you're not as an experienced driver. Um, Unlisted drivers under $25, $2,500 is what I need to pay, and there's no other additional excesses. So it's really important that I list the under 25 drivers. Um, you can see here that I've listed myself, and I've also listed my partner as drivers on the car. Cool. All right, so those are the main details. Now, again, before we go into details about what is what, uh, I want to give you guys a chance to do some discussing. Um, so, again, let me make this bigger so we can see it. Okay, so discuss in your groups the following things. First thing is what is the difference between premium and excess fees? Second thing is what do you think comprehensive insurance covers? The other type of insurance I could have gotten is third party. So have a little think about what the difference in those two types could be. Um, discuss some ways that I could reduce my car insurance bill. Uh, and also, lastly, think about other things that we could have insurance for outside of car insurance, which we already started to discuss. So take a moment, chat with your groups about these four questions. You don't have to write anything down. Um, I will be jotting down some more notes onto our paper. I just said you don't need to copy down the questions, you are just discussing them. All right. Well, then it's not something to see yourself right now. All right. Cool. Let's start talking about some of these discussion questions. So, the first thing. What is the difference between premium and excess? Anyone have a stab at it? Should you look at my screen again? So I had my premium here. I can see that there's a due date for that payment. And I have my excess, but there's no information about when do I have to pay that? So what are we thinking? Mercy. Yep. Yes, exactly. So when I have my premium, that is my annual fee of what I need to pay in order to have insurance. So the premium is the annual or monthly fee to have insurance. If you want, you can write it on the sheet, or if you want, you can write it in your notes and just go, um, premium fee is my annual fee, or monthly fee. <laughs> So you write the premium fee is your annual or monthly fee to have insurance. So every year I pay about six hundred dollars to the AA and I to have insurance. Yeah, annual or monthly. So some people pay by the month, and so you have insurance covered coverage for each month, some pay annually. You do get a little bit of a saving if you pay annually. All right. The excess then the excess, which is that list of information here, that is the fee I have to pay if I get into an accident. Um, 
So the insurance doesn't kick in until I pay my excess first. So basically, let's say I get into a car accident and it's my fault and there needs to be $2,000 worth of repairs onto my car. I have to pay the first $500 of those repairs and then the insurance company covers the remaining $1,500. Does that make sense? If I got into an accident and it is not my fault, the other person's insurance pays to repair my car. Hopefully they have insurance. If they don't, then we're going to have issues because then they have to pay for the repairs of the car out of their own pocket. Yeah? Are we okay so far? Okay. So, and like I said, the excess does vary depending on who the driver is because I do let other people drive my car and so I could have extra additional excess fees if I have someone under the age of 25. Are we okay so far with that? All right, let's look at our second question. All right, what do you think comprehensive insurance covers versus third party? You guys heard third party before, comprehensive? So what I have is comprehensive insurance. You can see that I have comprehensive insurance at the top of my list here. It says comprehensive car insurance. So what that means is that this insurance policy covers not only the other car, if I get into an accident and their repairs, but also the repairs to my car as well. So comprehensive is like everything. If you only have third party insurance, what you are then saying is, if I get into an accident and my car gets damaged, I only want the other person's car to be fixed. I will take the cost of whatever it costs to fix my car. So that's the difference between third party and comprehensive. So third party just makes sure that you're insured if you get into an accident and damage someone else's property and I don't care about my car. When do you think I might be in a situation like that? I don't care about damage to my own car. What if my car is a piece of junk? What if, what if my car is only worth $500? Do I care then? <laughs> no. So, I have comprehensive insurance because my car is actually worth quite a bit of money. Uh, $9,400. That's quite a bit of money for me to eat and to have to pay to get, like, to replace my car. So I do want comprehensive insurance. If my car was worth less, say a thousand bucks, I might then go, you know what? I have a thousand bucks in my savings account. I won't worry about getting third party or I won't worry about getting comprehensive insurance. Are you okay with that so far? All right. This then feeds into question number three. How could I reduce my car insurance bill? So if I swap from comprehensive insurance to third party insurance, my insurance bill will be less because I'm the insurance company is not offering me as much. Does that make sense? So these are the things you need to think about if you are getting insurance. Do you want your car to be covered or do you just want the third party person to be covered? You don't just, like you don't need to legally have car insurance in New Zealand, but the risk you then run is if you hit someone else's car, you have to pay for everything. And if you don't pay for everything, then they can take you to the disputes tribunal and make you pay. And they get creditors to follow you and things like that. They, they will get creditors to follow you and like hassle you to get the money out. Yeah. People go knocking on your door. Basically, debt collectors will come. It's not worth the risk. All right. Are we good with that so far? All right. So, some ways that I could reduce my car insurance bill. First one is changing my policy. So right now I could change the policy into third party so that way it's less. There's lots of other things I can do to help reduce my car insurance bill. Um, first thing that I can think about with car insurance, I can decrease the car insurance cost if I'm a safe driver. Um, if I have a full license, um, if I don't get any speeding tickets, 
that sort of thing.、Uh, and it, the other way that you can make sure you don't have high car insurance is you just don't get yourself into accidents. So I have a history with the AA insurance. I don't make claims, and since I don't make claims, they're like, oh, she's very low risk. We will decrease the cost of her insurance because we know she's probably not going to get into an accident. If I get into an accident year after year after year after year, the insurance company sees me as high risk, and so since I'm high risk, they will increase my premium costs. Does that help? All right. So that's something to keep in mind as you're driving and doing things like that. It's worthwhile to be a safe driver because then your insurance is less.、Um, other things that I've done is I have opted out from additional benefits.、Um, I believe both of these were an extra fifty dollars a year.、Uh, so one was excess for glass coverage. So if my windscreen breaks, they would help cover that cost. The other thing is if my car gets damaged and I can't drive it and I need to rent a car, they would cover the cost of the rental. I decided not to add on these two things and save myself a hundred bucks because with the glass repairs, I looked up the cost of glass repairs and decided, you know what, it's fine. I'd rather just pay it if it does happen. It's unlikely to happen.、Uh, also, with the rental cover, my partner has a car. He works from home. I could borrow his. So it wasn't worth me spending an extra hundred bucks a year on those two things. So these are things you got to think about when we are doing risk analysis、uh, for insurance. Are we good so far? All right. So, last question is: other things that we think we need insurance for. So, what do you think we might need insurance for? Your health. Your health. Yep. So, let me go write us a list of things that we need to think about. First thing is health. So, there's health insurance. What else? Life insurance, house insurance. Anything else? Huh? What about pet insurance? Have you guys heard about pet insurance? There's pet insurance. Not for when your pet dies. It's for if you have an emergency vet bill, and let's say it's three thousand dollars. The insurance pays for that, so you might again. You probably have a deductible, or sorry, an excess. So you pay two hundred dollars, and then they pay the rest of it. So pet insurance. There's also renter's insurance, also known as contents insurance. So basically, that's insurance on your stuff. So let's say you want to get contents insurance or renter's insurance.、Um, let's say. Your house gets broken into, and your laptop and your phone gets stolen. Your contents insurance would cover that. You have to be careful when you get contents and renters insurance.、Uh, there's two different versions. There's replacement. So that is like the full cost of buying something brand new, and there's also present value. So let's say, for example, your phone is three,、uh, two years old. So it's Gone from being a thousand dollar phone to a seven hundred dollar phone, they'd only give you seven hundred dollars. Whereas if you got replacement value, then they'd give you not like a thousand. Um, other things that you could have are travel insurance. All right, man, this document camera's not working today. All right, oh, dental. Yeah. All right. Life insurance. What does that cover? If you die, you get paid out. Do you always need to have life insurance? Yes. No. It's optional. So, with life insurance, gentlemen, can you please stop being very rude? All right. With life insurance. It makes sense to have it during certain stages of your life. Right now, I don't have life insurance, and the reason why is because I don't have any children. So if I die, the only person that is going to be greatly affected by it is my partner. Now my partner works, so and he can survive on a single income. So there's no point in me getting life insurance because he'll be fine on his own. If we had a child, we would both get life insurance because if one of us dies, it's going to be really hard to raise a child in a single 
income. So that's, you gotta keep in mind when you need life insurance. My parents had life insurance, obviously, for when my brother and I were younger. Now that they're retired and my brother and I have grown up and are financially stable and independent, they no longer have life insurance because they don't have dependents on them anymore. So be mindful of things like life insurance. Just don't go out and buy it because you're like, I need insurance. Are you at a stage in your life that you need it? Yeah? Yes. Yes. So health insurance isn't really an issue here in New Zealand as it is in the States. In New Zealand, we do have a public health care system. And so there's really not a need to have private health insurance. Some people do opt into it because they like having the option of being seen by doctors faster and getting more access to medications. Again, it depends on your age as well. So I'm quite young. I don't see a point in me having health insurance because it's unlikely I will have a major issue. And on top of that, we have a public health care system. So these are the options you got to weigh. Some people like to have the health insurance so that way they have that benefit. Uh, I'm just watching our time. All right, one last thing I want to talk to you guys about in deciding about insurance is risk. All right, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to deciding whether or not you want to get insurance is risk factors. So people are probably thinking about renters or contracts insurance being a useful insurance to have because you can replace items if they get stolen or lost or broken. Now, what my mom and I did when I started working is we made a list of emergencies. So what potential emergencies could happen and how much would it cost? So here's my emergency list. So my first thing on my emergency list was that I might need to have emergency flights home to the US. Someone gets sick, I need to go see them. I'm budgeting $2,000 if that happens. Yeah, for emergency last minute flights to the States. Uh, I have a cat. Emergency vet bill for the cat could be about $3,000. This is all rough estimates of my risk. Um, let's say something happens with my car. Now with my car, I do have insurance, so I should have $500 quickly available in case I need to pay my excess. Let's say I have an emergency, emergency dental bill. I need to get a root canal. I'm gonna budget $500 for that. Um, other thing, let's say my phone dies. I need to replace my phone. I need about $900 to do that. Yeah, let's say my laptop dies. I need $3,000 to probably replace a oh, good. And then let's say I have whiteware. So whiteware is going to be stuff like your fridge, like your washer and dryer, basically household appliances. They're probably about $500 a pop. So I would say I need about $1,500. So I personally have not bought any dental insurance, content insurance, or renter's insurance because um, I'll explain in a moment. I've made my list of emergency costs. These emergency costs add up to about $11,400. Now, it's very unlikely that all of these things are going to go wrong at the same time. It's unlikely that I'm going to have a vet bill, my car's going to die, I'm going to have a root canal, I have to go back to the States, my phone dies, my computer dies. It's very unlikely all those things will happen in one perfect storm. So I don't need to have $11,000 in my bank account for emergency money. I say, you know what, I probably need about $5,000 as my emergency money. So what I have set up in my bank account, and this is what my mom and I discussed, is I have $5,000 sitting in my bank account untouched in case of emergencies. Now for me, it made more sense financially to do that because now I can save money on insurance. So now I'm not spending money on renter's insurance and health insurance and dental insurance and, all, and pet insurance. I can save a few hundred dollars a year by not having those insurances. And then I can take that money, save it and invest it and get more money. So that was the risk that I am now taking. 
And that's what you need to think about too when you're deciding whether or not to buy insurance. Do you want to buy the insurance and have that safety net? Or would you rather take the risk and have some money aside in the event of an emergency? Either way, you should have some money something somewhere. All right, cool. Move on to the last thing for today.